VR or virtual reality can transport you into a different world and it feels like you are really there. You can dodge monsters, fly like a superhero. It is a whole new gaming experience. But some folks are just looking for connection. And that's what one woman found during the pandemic lockdown. Here's Jessica Chaw with her story. You could move your hands and move backwards and forwards. Claire Maddie may be 62, but she knows her way around the metaverse. Using a virtual reality headset, she can play games and explore new worlds as an escape from a harsh reality. He got diagnosed with lung cancer. Last year, doctors told Claire and her husband Ted his radiation treatments didn't work and they should stop. And he didn't want to know how long he had. I did, so I stayed in the room and they told me four to six months. Unable to leave home due to Ted's declining health and COVID restrictions, Claire felt isolated. I had to have some kind of release to be a good caregiver. I just put it on and off I went. While playing around in a few apps, Claire discovered death Q&A. And I'm like, death Q&A? I, I think that's something I would be interested in. The first time she joined the group, she found herself looking at a Tibetan temple. Once inside, Claire was surrounded by 25 other avatars, other people sharing stories and questions about grief, losing loved ones, and how to cope with death. It's really bizarre, but it felt okay. And I'd come, I'd share if there was an update, or I'd share good things that happened. She also listened. Some members, she says, are her very close friends now. Who would have thought that a person in Africa and a person here in Macon, Georgia would find each other and find similarities through grief? Six months after the diagnosis, Ted did pass away. It was so traumatic to watch, but you lovingly hold space with them. And we did our best to assist them. The next meeting, Claire told the group she'd been sharing her story with for months about Ted's death. We all talked about Ted the whole time, and it felt good. The ball has started rolling and it's not going to stop. Mercer's assistant professor of psychiatry, Dr. David Johnson, specializes in technology used in clinical practice. Johnson says this has the potential to become the new frontier of social platforms. VR just takes us one step further in being able to find those folks that we can connect with um, in those times that we need connection most. Johnson says since it's new, there are still ethical and moral boundaries to consider, but... We should definitely explore it more. We should do so somewhat cautiously, though, and think through, like, and ethically, how am I going to integrate this into my life or into my practice? But for Claire, it helped. And I really can't say what my journey would have been like with Ted dying without it, but I know what it was like with it. She says virtual reality doesn't cure grief, but it can prepare you. It gave me tools to manage my grief so that I'm not dealing with some of the things people might bottle up. In Macon, Jessica Cha, 13 WMAC News. Mandy still goes to the death Q&A meetings each Tuesday, and she says she will for the foreseeable future. If you'd like to learn how you can access the metaverse, Jessica Cha has a small tutorial using a VR headset that is in this web story on 13WMAZ.com. We're also breaking down some of the numbers behind virtual reality. E-Market Research shows 170 million people use virtual reality worldwide. The global virtual reality video game revenue reached almost $23 billion in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. Last year, consumer unit shipments of VR headsets like the one Claire Matty uses were projected to reach $15.5 million. In 2020, Facebook was the leading seller of headsets at 39% followed by Sony and company Pico. The number of American jobs that use VR is projected to reach 2.3 million in 2030.